Ladies and Germans, how you all doing? This is Con Ulrich. And I'm Wing Gru. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, we promised you a game with the Divisions of Normandy. I don't even know what to call it. Mod? Mod. That's the term I'm looking for. Thank you. I was so stuck thinking about uh, our discussion about Verfram a couple of days ago, which, by the way, if you're returning back in for that piece of trivia, Verfram means launch frame. Mm-hmm. So not it's inherently really sexy. Roman. Yeah, exactly. It's not, not inherently sexy, but you know what? The Germans couldn't be everything. Hans. Hans. Gets the launch frame. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, but let's turn our attention over here to this uh, little match today on Odon. Naturally, you can tell by that, uh, you know, north to south ugly road there. Rang, who mm -hmm. is duking it out? Well, on the left-hand side in blue, we have Bumblebee Potato playing as the 82nd Airborne Division. And on the right-hand side, uh, we have Curbs. He has Rouse names for Rouse reasons, and he's playing as the 10th SS Panzer Division. Ah, the old, old 82nd Airborne, run by own Iron Tits himself. Mm-hmm. And Tempest who did things. I don't really know anything about Tempest but... Uh, fearsome division. Here. Very fearsome division. Uh, going any deeper than that, I'm not sure we can legally do that without talking about some horrible, horrible stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to talk about SS divisions without mentioning all the war crimes. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's yeah. kind of... Yeah, any, anyway, so... Oh, and, on. It's a pretty good for an airborne division, for, for the town at least, but as we've seen for 10th SS, they're going to go pretty heavy for the town as well. Rang, just remember, one click is being met by two clicks. <laughs> well, if it's a boat action rifle. At that point, uh, well, I can't think of anything punny to say. Get shot. Well, I thought about that, but I was like, you know, that's a little too, uh, whatever. Pack Howitzer, though, is out, and he's just going to start launching smoke down range, which I think is an excellent idea. And mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons to bring an early, early 75mm on the field. Yeah. The smoke is, smoke wins battles. Smoke is such a important tool. Not just in still division, but every single video game that has smoke grenades or some sort of smoke capabilities is so goddamn powerful. It's crazy. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking back to Call of Duties, and you're like, oh, throw a smoke grenade, it's like the entire world vanishes in a cloud of phosphorus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, it, it's just, it's a constant video games. Red barrels explode, and smoke is always underused, but always extremely useful. You know, I will say, I started to play Assassin's Creed Origins, whatever the, or the, the Sparta one, with Odyssey. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize until last night by accident that the red jars in there explode also. <laughs> I don't know if that's like a Greek fire thing, or what's yeah, going on. Yeah, I don't know about it. that either. Uh, looks like Bumblebee Potato is going to get engage that um, pack track. Not exactly where you want to have that. Mm-hmm. It's a little, little bit risky. He's just out of range. I, just, I, I, don't, I don't think he's out of range. Yeah, he's oh, no, out he of range. He can't be seen. I can't be seen. That's what I was trying to say, yeah. But that's, that's lucky in that regard, but you need to get his panic and deers up to try and deal with that AV rifle squad because he's going to lose his light vehicles in the middle. Yes, because if it's one thing that uh, most of these German vehicles really need to understand is the importance of not being seen. Oh, yeah. Sadly, Monty Python was not uh, making instructional videos for the old Wehrmacht these days. And, oh. um, ooh, M22s, we got, we're going we're to have a plague of locusts. Oh, oh, boy, I love seeing locusts. That makes one of us. I would imagine a locust would be kind of telling me that, the, well, the plagues are coming. <laughs> yeah. This 250 Mark Nine is very, very unfortunate. Oh no, he's going to see them. Okay. Yeah. Perfect use, like one punch, two punch with the mortar half track and the auto cannon half track. Yeah. And this is a real nice push here from Curbs, pushing right through the middle and get a nice chunk of territory with that auto cannon half track. Well, pack tracks and engage that uh, locust, and I dare say this should be a pretty easy uh, game set and match here. Yeah, free, free self action so you can't really go wrong with that. Well, if nothing else, having a crew knocked out so you can get four shots off to the enemy's one, that's pretty darn good, I would mm -hmm. say. If he can penetrate, he keeps bouncing because there's a rather low-powered AT gun, but still, just... He's been consistent, just not powerful. powerful. Actually, <laughs> god damn, he's going to go out. That lucky, that lucky locust. Well, you know what? The pack track is more of a, bar a party guy anyway. You know, he just wants to make the, like, the room bounce a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, shoot some firecrackers, make yeah. some sounds. Yeah. Lift the tunes a bit. 
Um, yeah. Auto Cannon, in the meantime, he's going to just fire off all of his rounds at that single AB rifle. And it's pinned now, too, so actually that's... Perfect. Yeah. That's going to give the town completely over to the Germans, and with the Panzer Grenadiers, they have long-range advantage and, and building, so it should be pretty easy for them to defend the town, as long as they have a good line of sight. You know, I like this actually, this idea right now, we're getting a couple of anti-air pieces being brought on in, it looks like the 20 mils. Yeah, this... Oh no, one's a flag to you fill in. And the other one is a... Uh, both of flag fill oh. actually. Ooh. What the hell? That's going to be a bit of an expensive calling, but you know, it's good fire support and it's good against an airborne division, you know, getting that preemptive AA like you were saying. Not for nothing, you know, we have, we have talked about this before. Um, I think you've said this as well. I confess, I don't know how all the divisions of Normandy in this mod Same. have been broken on out. So, forgive us if we call it a little bit funky. It's just uh, going to kind of catch some of us off guard. At least it will catch me off guard a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's quite, I haven't really looked over all divisions either, so, I mean, we'll, we'll see what comes out when it comes out. Well, as long as, you know, the 82nd Airborne doesn't have, you know, dropping fireflies or something like that, <laughs> like it, it'll make sense. Dropping behind enemy lines and right behind a panther tank. Yeah, well, yeah. it looks like in the meantime, Pack Track has called an exterminator, it takes out one locust. Mm-hmm. And yep, you're right, those are Flak Veerlings. That is going to be hellaciously effective against the light-skinned uh, American group here. Yeah, yeah. But still, it's a 50-50 on the map. I think that's just used to the fact that Bumblebee has the territory down south just just a little bit. But still, I, I'd say map control really goes more towards uh, Curb's favor. Just having that town in the middle was a pretty big deal. Well, and um, mortaring this AB rifle is going to do a lot for that, too. Mm -hmm. AB rifle is not going to get anywhere. No. Really could use some mortar half tracks so far. It's been real pivotal in keeping that southern flank of the town nice and secure. It certainly has. Now, I am surprised this pack track is not engaged in a locust. Again, instead, he's going after this infantry to the north. Yeah. Wait, does he have line of sight on the locust? I don't think he has line of uh, sight. I'd argue that he does. But maybe I'm wrong. I think it's just like... Oh, that's like that one weird meter. thing. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's really tight. Really tight. Okay, I just heard the zing as the pop gun, the 37 mil, put a round mm -hmm. off on top of the pack track. It just zinged in my head. <laughs> oh, that's... It's the little touches. The things you don't really notice too much. Um, mm -hmm. More uh, infantry coming on in, as is another set of auto cannon tracks. So the auto tracks are, uh, well, that's not something you want to meet in a dark alley. Oh no, especially at close range, they really mess you up with uh, fast firing 20mm auto cannons. I don't think anyone would want to be on the receiving end of a 20mm auto cannon unless they have like, you know, 3 to 4 centimeters of armor protecting you. True. Or more. Preferably more. Well, bigger is better, more is more. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I agree with you there. And sloped. Sloped armor is pretty good as well. And, uh, was it? And, and cast iron stuff as opposed to welded, yes? Yeah. Or, or like the modern stuff where it's like explosive reaction armor so like blows up the shot when it hits you oh yeah the react oh yeah it yeah, momentum I, it, what, what we're trying to say here is that if we were to be shot at by a 20 millimeter auto account of german origin during world war ii we'd run a lot of protection between us and the bullets coming towards us <laughs> uh by the same token though if i was ever to be shot at by a 20 millimeter cannon i kind of want to be in a battleship on the back end of it so <laughs> yeah. Preferably in the middle of the battleship, not near any of the sides, not near the ammunition. Yeah, before the things that go boom, yeah. Yeah, you know. Now, this 37mm has been surprisingly effective, and another 37 was that 30, another 37mm did it? No. no, look look down south, Con, it's a, it's a rather traitorous Flak 88. So that's what the 82nd Airborne gets. That's... Mm -hmm. They had it in the campaign in the SC-44, so that's probably why they have it here. And historically, uh, most likely. And as well, we're actually going to see a stovepipe in here uh, with the 60 mil mortar going like crazy after that flak veerling. I don't know what the 10th SS will really do to bring this back. They do have themselves a lot of income that could be coming their way in about 200 seconds or so, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking they're, they're kind of like a like second panzer where all their stuff in B phase, but instead of more like light vehicles and like one heavy tank in B phase, it's more. 
like medium tanks and whatnot. That's, that's, that's what I'm thinking from when I took a quick glance, but don't. I mean, we're, we're bloody seeing a minute and a half. And then in 30 second increments after that. Mm hmm. Now, if I could do anything to change, I think the 222s or like that, or the, or the uh, auto cannon tracks, I really would like to see them have a more than 200 rounds. I get what that is, but for me, I'd be keeping at least another truck and an Opal Blitz just to kind of keep those guys up and running. Those guys are very yeah. important, I would say, to any Panzer Division. Especially early on. Like, German auto cannons are so lovely to use when you use them correctly. And against an airborne division, they're really goddamn good. It's just not really too much in terms of armor mm -hmm. early on. I mean, you can kill bloody locusts with auto cannons if you get close enough. So, the auto cannons are just a versatile, versatile weapon. <laughs> it pierces flesh just like armor. <laughs> and at a high fire rate as well. Ugh. But regardless, the flak buildings are still on the field, and those guys, one of them has been fired off 400 rounds, and I think it's a big reason that the Americans have not tried to push over this open ground in the north. Mm-hmm. But good lord, there's a lot of firepower raining on down. Two yeah, star pack right. howitzers, oh, actually he's almost out of HE, and the 60 mm mortar is almost done too. So I guess the question is, what happens when these artillery pieces run out of the boom boom. They're probably going to need trucks to resupply them, I guess. And a rather boring answer. But I, I don't really know what else to say. Well, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, you know, not, not like a change in diapers for the boom boom. So yeah. that's fine. <laughs> there was a lot of artillery from the Germans. It might be HA-18s or maybe neighbor refers. Nope, yeah, that's... No, those are FK-18s, actually. There's a one... Two trips. Three FK 18 artillery pieces. Which is something you don't see all too often. Usually for a good reason. Yeah. Uh, Locust is moving forward. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a Panther Grenadier be like, okay, time to get out there, boys. Let's go and uh, 86 them. Mm hmm. I didn't know 82nd Panther Division. Um, pa Airborne Division. <laughs> has, has, they have a Hellcat. That's, uh, that's pretty powerful. You know what? I think someone over here is playing favorites for divisions. <laughs> I mean, it's no veteran like like the full farmer. How it goes, we see how the hell count performs. We True. just a lot of us have you know b bad experience with full farmer still. There's yeah. still something that's definitely been like e even now full farmer has been like nerfed, so they're not completely broken. It's really desert ranch, which is now the completely broken ally division. You know, it's still, still a big stigma around full farmer. Yes, there is. Yeah. I can still feel the shakes. I can still hear the screaming. God, all the 105 Shermans on A-phase. Please, Abrams, no, not the 75mm <laughs> HE. Your two-star veteran she is too good. Well, it looks like Bumblebee Potato seems to think himself as taking a decent amount of territory. He's bringing in machine guns. Curious oh, decision. Yeah. Uh, I wonder. I wonder if they're fifty cows or if M Fifty cows would be great. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Couldn't say for sure. What I can tell you is that the Panzerfaust from that brave little Pigren squad was ineffective. But the FK 18 so these guys, they could do some uh, nice morale damage here. Mm-hmm. And the mounts that you have, they're not the best in terms of. Like explosive value, they're really just a, a mortar unit to be honest, with better range. But they got a lot of them, they got the veteran C. It's just like a section, it's just about quantity over quality. And quantity has a quality all of its own. So, I mean, exactly. Whatever he's doing though, he's got to get it done quick because that is a scary force moving to the north. That's, that is one Kampf group uh, mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to be uh, messing around with. Yeah, we're also seeing a Panther 4 being brought up north to try and deal Reef the fret. Uh, those are 50 cows, by the way. Oh, damn, that is. Yeah, 50 cows have problems just as well as. Well, not as well, but in the same vein as German 20 mil, so. Yeah, as you see, completely pinned down both Tigre and Scrotch. Hey, yep, they film so full holes with. Uh, like, they might have thought they'd been Swiss cheese. Mm -hmm. As the Swiss might say, though, that's a no gouda. <laughs> And unfortunately for the uh, FK-18s, they are now within line of sight. 
of those Hellcats. So I, I envisioning, I'm just going to call it out here. Wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing some deaths among artillery crews pretty, pretty darn fast. Yeah, we're also seeing a stunk being brought out as well to try and deal with the Allied armor up north. I mean, really, it's the Hellcats that's the big scary thing. But he's going to be pulling that back now to a safer position and letting the Pathfinders and Locusts take the point. But then he doesn't really need to worry too much about this. He's at the plus one. Frankly, he could just kind of waltz his... He could just bound his machine guns forward. He still has smoke on... Oh, he doesn't. Never mind. Mm-hmm. And the Germans have fallen back from the town at the moment, so that'd be a good opportunity to strike. And oh, look, here's a uh, P-47 Thunderbolt with a bunch of bombs. But I don't think he dropped any, so the Black Valin did its job. Well, the traitorous uh, Black 88 is going to just force back the ME-109. Mm-hmm. Coward. Ba oh, jeez, the P-4 didn't even do anything. The Hellcat oh. fired one shot and just told, forced them to bail out. Yeah, it wasn't really the best ready to move up the Panzer IV, as the Hellcat does have the range advantage. He's probably sort of brought it along the southern side, where he's bringing the stug. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was a little, little bit silly. By adding insult to injury, the Locust is the thing that nips the Panzer in the bud. <laughs> Not good at all. You see, he got all the artillery trying to fire on that Hellcat, but he's not exactly hitting it. A little bit inaccurate. I think I find it more humorous that the 250-10 is in the middle of, like, 18 different pieces of equipment. <laughs> he, just, he just wants to feel, you know, at he's, home. He's food. a cuddler. Yeah. He's there for moral support. He's certainly, he, he's certainly not there for the morale support, I can tell you that much. Oh yeah, all five support with bloody weapons down. He's just down to uh, look pretty. Hey, there there are uglier ones out there. I guess oh, I'll yeah. take it. Oh yeah, there's, there's a lot more uglier German vehicles out here for sure. Especially uh, those cross hybrids between, you know, and a finite capture and just slap a pack 40 on top. You know, I try to think back to the... Um... Thunderbolt gets bombs off this time. Oh, this Locust, look at him, that is perfect flanking position. And he's going to be able to knock out his entire artillery park. And the Pack 40 up north is going to run right into a Pathfinder squad. In, in that ambush, and that's really going to bugger up the Pack 40. Damn. Ammo storage hit on the Stug as well, That that's embarrassing. Yeah, it says everything's going wrong for wow. curbs. Absolutely everything's going wrong. Yeah, he is kind of getting curbs stomped, isn't he? <laughs> yes. I don't yes, know. I've never, I've never made that joke before. I have no idea how I've never made that joke with him. But the Stug finds out that, uh, yep, that is what happens to the Stug life. Mm hmm. Especially when you saw your side armor. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And like you said, the M22, he is just having a blast here. Like, oh boy, free targets. They can't shoot back. These pioneers are going to try to come towards them. I don't think that's really going to be a great idea. Yeah, it's not really going to not really do anything, as you so eloquently see, especially with Allied Artillery completely pummeling the area. And I'm really quite surprised I haven't seen too much else here from Curbs. I mean, he has a huge income in B phase. I don't exactly know what. What the Other B phase load at least a little bit. Yeah. It really hasn't been much on the field. From curbs it seems. Just just point rise. I think he's just been losing it all. Like losing the Panther 4 and Stug were pretty big losses. Certainly wasn't helped by the way that that infantry got pwned. Mm-hmm. And that and got all the PDQ, I'm sorry, yes. Yeah, and all the pioneers were forced to unload early, so they're gonna, not going to get anywhere near the front line for now. Or towards the town, which is probably a destination. And you know what? Big deal. Even if the, this locust goes down, he served exactly the purpose he was supposed to. Yeah, he more than paid himself off. And yep, when the machine guns are getting close enough that you can start perhaps using them on the anti-aircraft gun, that's how you know things are rather dire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's not good at all. Not good at all. 
even more dire when the mortar half track is taken to get shot at by an artillery piece. I'm waiting for that 105 to take out the mortar half track. And they were seeing a big clump of infantry from Bumblebee being brought in, a lot of that to try and take the town, which is definitely the time to do so. True. Very true, and you can see right now the 105s are going to have some really great area denial here. It's going to get one shot off right as an infantry gets there. Damn. Yeah. Pretty, pretty good hit. And pinned? Oh, I'm surprised. I thought we were going to get a pin there immediately. It's Wait. actually quite surprising, like, the truck takes morale damage, but when you unload the infantry, they don't have the same morale damage as the truck. It doesn't transfer over. Well, you know what? It's like watching Indiana Jones. You know the whole truck scene from Raiders of the Lost Ark? Those dudes yes. in the back, they see a German guy after German guy thrown out, but you're like, you know what? We're still game. Let's get back up to the front. <laughs> we don't care. It's that, that, that fighting spirit, that mm -hmm. uh, je ne sais quoi. Riri. Ri. Uh, there's the extent of my French, other than some rather nasty terms I cannot repeat in any cast. And wow, the 82nd Airborne is... Pretty damn good. They have a deep bench. Yeah, yeah. It's. I'm not, I'm not really going to say because it's Hellcat, because even though the Hellcat is a pretty good unit, it's only got one of them out. It's really just been to Bumblebee's good use of the M22 Locust and Artillery. Like, at 105 Howitzer, it's been absolutely on point and knocking out all the curbs like vehicles. Now, I've seen a Panther being brought in. That's, that's a pretty big deal. That could be the thing that turns the tide. Here's infantry there to back it up. You can go Hellcat. That's really, you know, armor dominant and is completely to the Germans. But, no. We're, we're, we're seeing many times one German heavy tank be brought up and it's meant to be the Messiah, but yet it ends up being a pile of scrap metal. Uh, from Rust he came into Rust he does return. Mm hmm. It's, it's, it's the Rickman curse. Ha! Because of the Vitzman. <laughs> More bombs going after the mortar half track. No, you were too oh. beautiful for this world. Yeah, and he's now smoldering wreck on the earth. M two HB in the meantime, down to the south. Shockingly enough, it's him that's doing all the morale damage. He's yeah. just freaking out auto cannon half tracks. Not anymore, thankfully, to them. But uh, he was freaking mm -hmm. them out quite sufficiently on his own. Quite crazy how many 50 cows you can get for 82nd Airborne. Because this is. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, six seven, seven. 50 cows on the field in total. Ah, uh, totally. I counted. North. Yep. That's. I, I don't know the availability of them because you know we haven't walked all the decks, but still, that's, that's a lot of goddamn 50 cows. Can we talk about the Verfram and Fiatzik coming in the south now? Oh, yeah, of course. Of course we can. So, oh, once I'll again, like launch frame. <laughs> I mean, it's an accurate term because they just stuck a bunch of launch streams for rockets, but it's not really sexy now, is it? Well, I think it sounds better than the fire porcupine or something like that. So, <laughs> fire porcupine sounds like a, like a forty k unit, or, or like some kind of draw juice and like Warhammer regular. True, true. There's some really crazy names though, too. Yeah. Although I I, I have to make one minor gripe. The Land Raider is because the guy who designed it, his name was Land. <laughs> what sort of name is that? Hi, my name is Land. Oh, do you play Magic the Gathering? Ay, ay, ay. Uh, but the Verf Roman, he's going to just destroy this town. He says, if I can't have it, nobody will. Oh. And, and the Americans are sponsored in kind of air artillery. Stopping yeah. The German infantry from getting in, yeah. So, total per it from everyone, and one brave squad of pioneers. I don't think he's really going to have the uh, chutzpah to stand his ground against all of that once they get off their freak out attack. Yeah, through the fire and the flames, he's not going to survive. Yeah, he's certainly not carrying it on. No. He's a bit of a wayward son, all things considered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the panther yeah. is on the field, and... He's engaged himself, the Hellcat uh, rather smartly pulled pulled back, not wanting to, you know, fight a goddamn two star Panther head on. So now it's just gonna be Panther slowly picking off infantry units. 
Well, you want to know why? Because there's two pop guns at 37 mils just waiting for him to come. Oh, I'd say about 400 meters to the west, and then we have two taking side shots at him. Oh yeah. And this uh, this is this is how you lure him forward. You smoke him out. This is beautiful. I I like this a lot. Like I said, love seeing good smoke play. Like I know this this is gonna be poaching, but again, I I can't help but just be like, this is that's a really mm -hmm. great call. I mean, if you have nothing to like penetrate the panther, you might as well just like stop him from shooting you. Just pocket sound. Indeed. Indeed. Come on over here down. He's considering. He's making an end run. Oh, no, okay. I thought he was making an end run, but nope. And I pack 37, excuse me, 37 mil. I get so used to seeing the pop gun, I think, oh, it must be German. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. The allies don't really have much in terms of light until you pop them out like 37 mil. Yeah, exactly. What would be the uh, poundage for that one? Is that the two pound gun, I want to say? Yeah, the two pound would be the British, like, small caliber AT gun. But by this time, it's pretty much phased out. So the first Raman does take out three units in the center part of the field. But with all the extra attention he's been garnering, um, wow, that round I thought landed on top of him, but not quite dead yet. Mm hmm. And once again, this HMG to the south is engaged as 222, and that should just be a crime against humanity. <laughs> we got the Shermans now, and more, another Hellcat down south. Two, two, two star Hellcats. Oh, oh god. Two, two star Hellcats, that's really, really powerful. Well, B3 comes on through, and that's the DD tank coming down. Uh, but in the meantime, though, the. Panther is going to get bombed, and everything in their mother is going to go after it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Panther, is he going to reverse smartly? Okay, he reverses behind the trees, that's good, not in front of him. His that's true, but the Hellcat's out. coming right on in. Oh yeah, and that Hellcat, he's a, you know, slippery bugger. Goddamn race car. Greasy how like a tank like that is fast and like most units. They really put like a lot of horsepower in that thing. And 95 kilometers an hour? That um yeah, he's he's got a little bit of heft. Oh, but Panda Shrek shrecks him off his uh like home run run, yeah. That's true, but there's another Hellcat coming through the center, and I think this guy's got a little more of the guns to get on in. Mm-hmm. The major concern is that first initial view. Which will be coming right quickly. Oh no, never mind, he calls it out. Great call. Yeah. Because Panther would most likely get first shot. Can we just talk about how that, that went from a plus one to a plus three in like an oh, instant? Damn. The yeah. entire south is gone, the north is gone. Curbs has completely run out of units at this point, it seems. Completely. He has one, two, one, two, three, four, five units on the field. And like one of them is no blitz. Yeah. It's like five units, really. So Hellcat is trying to draw that panther in. I don't think it's going to happen. The panther is mm -hmm. a little bit too wily for this. Oh, that is a tight... That's a tight shot there. Yeah, shooter knocked out. Good, good harassment. Not going to be following up for a second shot, yo. Well, this is how you use a tank destroyer. You come in, you take a shot, you come back out. Mm -hmm. Bounce and panther. That's yeah, just... That, that's some great micro. Yeah. And, and the other Hellcat's coming from the north. That's the great thing about the Hellcat, is that you can just do that crazy pop-in, pop-out stuff. <laughs> and the Verof Ramos says, <laughs> Get away from my big brother! <laughs> oh. And the Hellcat freaks out. But I think this is all she wrote. Wow, that was a dominant performance over here by the 82nd Airborne. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just pretty much good play. Really good use of the Locust early on. I mean, knocking out uh, FK-18 Artillery Park, really buggered. Curb jumping, both losing the stag end, the Panther, Panther 4 in that uh, B phase. Quite true. And even if he gives up this aircraft in the meantime, I don't think he will necessarily. Especially if that traitor is Flak-88 still around. And Curb says, forget it. Discretion is the better part of Valor. At least he didn't lose the Panther. True. True. We were expecting that, and wow, this actually... Damn. 
fairly yeah. devastating KD. I mean, early on, which is, even though this is like a real like one side in terms of KD, Curbs was doing a really good job in that early phase, early A, a phase, you know, holding the map. He just didn't manage to fully exploit it. It was pretty back and forth early on, I'd argue. Kind, uh, kind of. Well, that, that one M22 you were talking about, that Locust? Mm -hmm. P4, a, a pack track, a pack 38, and two FK18. So that's that's a, a pretty decent tally before you die. Oh, yeah. That is, that's really rough. It, extremely rough. It. Looking at losses, they're nothing really spectacular on the German side, yeah. Nope. Bunter. Nope, unfortunately not. But, yeah, just wow. Good, good player. Good play from Bumblebee. Indeed there was. And, well, so folks, if you're looking for a division to check on out inside that Divisions of Normandy mod, uh, I think the answer is in. Give a look to the 82nd Airborne. Mm-hmm. They're pretty, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Indeed. So, Rang, any other pearls of wisdom? Uh, none. All right, folks, I think I'm going to leave that last little bit lying fallow for right now. Um, our coverage, I think, is done for the week unless we find something that really tickles our fancy. And I guess we'll see you guys next week. I am Con Ulrich. I'm Rangroo. Take it easy.